Hello there, YouTube. We're making an antenna invention here. I do have a video on this antenna, motorcycle antenna. Here's how the fitting goes. We're going to use this 24 inch bicycle rim for a ground plane. Instead of radials on the bottom, your ground radials, it'll be mostly for listing. But if it tunes alright, because there's no way to tune the antenna, I will use it for transmitting. This washer right here would be the same as if you went to a car body. Okay. I have this tapered already, ground on tapered, so it will pound in here. I had it started in there. I have plenty of clearance to where this will go down. The center will just start going into this hole. The way you hook these up, is the center of the coax cable came up here, not the wide slot, there's a narrow one, it might not show up on camera. You bet the tip of the center conductor over. Okay, now the braid always, I always had it to a uh, lug terminal, ring terminal. I'm going to put the braid up inside of here. You're not supposed to do that, I've done it on connectors with your reducer, but I'm going to do it. Because where it comes out of the bottom, I'll also reground the braid. So I will have it two times grounded to this. Okay. We'll take a little shot of this through the whole thing. Have to excuse my scanner, my radios. If I turn them all down and I go to film, it's too much work for me. Just let them roll. Just let everything run. I have videos on both of those. I have a video on that. But I haven't posted it yet. I might, I may redo it. It's too long of a video. Anyway, back to the project at hand. This piece would have went over top of this. When this was bolted in the body with this nut, this real skinny nut, this would have went over top with a gasket. We're still going to use a gasket. And this will all be sealed up with sealer or I do my, or I will do my hot glue trick. This will be all waterproof. I may put a small gasket here to keep this waterproof, which I probably will. It'll be even if it's a real thin piece of plastic, uh, inner tube, rubber, something. It will be that way, sealed. I'm not going to use a lock washer on this nut because that doesn't give me enough clearance. If this was on a vehicle and I went through the body where this washer would have been the body, there would have been a lock washer on there. I'll still be able to get this apart. When this pounds together, it's going to be pretty tight. But if I ever want it apart again, I will find a way to get it apart. I will cut this with a grinder. I will do anything to save all this and get this antenna apart. Because to me, it does have some value. So... I'll probably include more pictures than video of when I start assembling this. And this side where it's threaded, that's where your cogs, sprockets would have went. I'm going to try to put that down inside a piece of pipe. I do have an aluminum piece of pipe with a couple screws drilled in there to hold it. That way it makes it easier to mount. I can put it over top of another pipe instead of clamping it. That way the cable can run all the way down through the pipe be inside. That was the whole idea. Keep the cable inside. Make it as weatherproof, waterproof as I can. I'd like to have an aluminum rim with stainless spokes but this is all I had. This is a really big hole in here. I had this standing vertically insulated on one that was flat like this horizontal and used it for a TV antenna with twin lead on it and it did work. I'd seen it on a, someone's house one time, and I asked a friend of mine and drove by. He'd stopped and visited with the guy before. He used it for a TV antenna, and he used it most, mostly on UHF. And he lived down in a valley, way out in the hills in Nebraska. And he picked up even UHF on it, is what he mostly built it for. Well, there's a big hole there, bigger than the bow stem. Because this stood up vertically and had it all plastic insulated. It worked good. Back when we had TV channels coming over an antenna, not the digital antennas, which wasn't too far back, I used to build TV antennas and it was another one of my hobbies. But This may just 
may just stay inside the shed up in the attic. I haven't decided yet. But if I want to make this video too long, I'll have pictures step by step of how I do this. Thanks for watching. Well, here's the finished product. These are two rubber gaskets stacked up. I had to cut the hole a little bit bigger than the center of this because I had to clear that nut. I did it on one of them so the other one would squish down over it. The SWRs are very low on two meters. Makes me think because they're so high on the marine band, 156 megahertz, that someone took that cap off and trimmed this antenna once. Of course, I'm inside when I did this by the window. So, I know stuff tunes in here. It's going to be a lot better outside. Watch, watch it make a liar out of me and be worse. But, I know a motorcycle doesn't have much of a ground plane. We're going to figure out how to put a pipe. We want to put this inside of a piece of aluminum pipe if it fits. If I have to shim it with copper, plastic or anything because I will have a screw in there. I will have a hole drilled in there so there's at least one screw grounding it to the mast. It really makes me think if somebody took that tip off and I'm not going to take it off to look at it. it. works on two meters that's all that matters to me. It makes a great scanner antenna. I'm picking up a station that's far away. State Patrol Tower and it's not easy to pick up even with an antenna in the air because a day like today I could tell on my other antennas day like today that's just the way it is But I kinda hate to put this outside as nice of an old antenna it is but if it isn't worth using and having fun with it isn't worth ha having I think I said that right lights are changing here because I'm by the window but there it is. And look at the frequency on here again. I think it's clear around here. 144 to 174 megahertz. You never know. Maybe in the instructions it told you to trim it. You could always saw that off. There's a wire inside that fiberglass. It's not exactly straight. When I pounded my washer and I think where I had all that solder on the nut, I think it caught on something. It's a little bit crooked. I'm not going to worry about it. If someone drives by and tells my antenna is crooked, they don't have much of a life. Fly stickers in the background. Those things work, people. I get moths in here in the evening with the light on if I have the door open. By morning, they're stuck to that kind of a gross thing to have but it works. Had to tie this on here so it doesn't fall off. But there we go. It's touching over there. We're going to put it in the air. We'll have a couple of pictures of it up in the air once it's in the air. If I don't do it when I post this video I'll do it someday. There will be some pictures out there. People are going to wonder, what's this crazy guy building? I'd rather have an aluminum rim with the stainless spokes. You put an old meter from here, and you try to run down with these zinc spokes or go out here in the nipple, you're going to get all kinds of readings on the ohm meter. But I know it's conductive enough that it'll work. That's the main thing. I've got a good connection on this hub. There's a good ground there. When I pounded that down in there, I was positive that solder hit. So I'm not going to ground it. I was going to strip the cable down underneath a little bit somewhere and put an extra ground. I'm just going to leave it alone. It's ground enough. I know that hit because I marked that and that's where it didn't want to go in straight. So I know I was mashing the solder into the metal. But it's all experimental. Do this stuff at your own risk. I know I'd transmit on two meters if I had to. I don't know about throwing a lot of wattage into it, but a handheld, that's what I use to check it with. Puts out about four watts hooked to the power supply on high. So, you can work on a handheld. Maybe I'll talk to somebody someday on a handheld with it locally. But thanks for watching.